this is Becky with RX Primal, and today we are going to be cooking boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Now, chicken breasts have been a constant source of frustration for me until I discovered this technique. They would always turn out dry, I couldn't quite tell if they were all the way done. So, this technique is really easy, it's really quick, and it works every single time. So, I want to share that with you, and we're going to dive right in. So to start out with, I've got two boneless, skinless chicken breasts here. They're from Sam Sam's Club or Costco. Both of them have free-range chicken breasts. You can see they're pretty thick, just very typical. And for whatever reason, you can't get skin in or bone on chicken breasts, so it's always a challenge to make sure that they're not dry. So to start out, I'm going to cut them in half, just straight through lengthwise like this. And that's going to make them cook a lot faster because the longer you leave them on the heat, the more chance they have to dry out. Dry out. There we go. All right. So you can see I'm just going to start it here. I'm going to try and keep these even. Whenever I do this, it's never quite even, but they always turn out okay. So try and keep them even but don't worry too much about it. There we go. So to start out, you can see I'm trying to cut right down the middle here. And then once I get to about this point where I'm a little over halfway, a lot of times I'll just slide the knife right in there, pick it up, and just continue running it through. There we go. All right, whoops, <laughs> got away. There you go, you can see it's pretty evenly cut. I did a pretty good job with that one. Normally, it's a little bit more uh, more uneven, but you can also turn it up so that you can see there's kind of the nice smooth side here and the more rough side here. Turn it up so the rough side is facing you because that is always the end that I end up cutting way too thin. So you can at least see if the knife is going through the chicken if you're looking at it from that side. This one's giving me a bit of trouble, so I'm going to pull it back over. And just be careful not to cut your fingers. I haven't, but you know, don't do this. Don't do this when you've had a couple too many drinks. There we go. All right, and slice it right on through there. All right, that one came out decently. All right, so we're done with the knife. Now, this is actually pretty fun. If you're taking out a little aggression. You're going to want to flip them down. I haven't noticed a difference whether I put which side down or not, so I don't think it really matters. All right, now I've got this nifty little, um, it's a cutting mat. If you don't have one, no worries. You can just use a plastic bag or plastic wrap. Let me rinse my hand off right quick. All right, there we go. Just don't want to sling chicken juice everywhere. All right, now I have a cast iron frying pan and we're actually going to flatten the chicken with this. It works really well. Now when you bring it down, try to keep it as dead on as possible. If you tilt it one way or another, it's not going to hit the chicken as well and the chicken will slide and of course then you've got chicken flying all over the place. All right, so here we go. Try and keep it straight down. It helps if you put your thumb on it. Okay. Let me check the chicken. Maybe scoot it back over. That piece is looking pretty good. That one could use a little more. That piece is starting to look good. That one needs a little more right here. So there should be even thickness, and you're aiming for about a quarter inch thick. So. again. Still a little bit too thick and that one needs some work right here. So flip it over, try and get the ends that need to be squished still. Obviously you could also use a meat pounder. 
This is just, whoops, squish that one a little too much. You can see that. Whoops, that's okay. It'll turn out fine. <clears throat> Not the first time I have over squished a chicken, if you can believe that. All right, so now they're pretty even. I'm gonna go ahead and start my pan. We're gonna put it at a medium high. There we go. And I'm gonna put the oven on 200 degrees. I always prefer the dial ovens. This one, just have to like sit there and poke at it forever, but whatever. All right, there we go, that's heating up. So while that is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and dry the chickens with some paper towels. This just helps them to brown a little bit more. So just pick them up, squish them. I'm saying squish chicken a lot in this video. There we go. And if you're worried about mess when you're actually pounding the chicken, you can put them in a large Ziploc bag and do it that way. That works just as well. A little less messy. I actually had one time when I was were first starting to pound chicken this way, which I got this, uh, this method from my mom. And I missed a little too much, like tilted the pan, and I squished the chicken just like I did with this one. And just chicken went everywhere. It was it was um, it was a very uh, clean up intensive day. There we go. All right. So this is the squished one. If you can't tell, but that one's gonna turn out fine. We're just gonna have to pull it off a little bit quicker once I put it in the pan. And here's my last one. There we go. There you go. You just gotta get some of the moisture off of them because that'll make it steam rather than brown. There we go. All right. Throw those little bits in there. And then let me toss this over here. Let me, okay, I'm done touching raw chicken, so I'm gonna wash my hands. utensil is actually my dish towel. All right, so I'm gonna take a nice big spoonful of it. This is like a small like serving spoon, so there we go. Now let that, let that melt right quick. The pan should be quite warm. chicken and one's going to be to take the chicken out once it's done and try not to get them mixed up. Okay, there we go. It's melting nicely and oven's warm so that's great. All right, here we go. First chicken, ouch. <laughs> going to pop that right in there. Second chicken, put it right next to each other. Try not to have them touching, that's going to stop them from browning quite as much. Now I've got a little pot lid, if you've got a splatter guard, that's even better. Uh, I'm just kind of making do here. Just put it on, and a lot of moisture and grease is going to collect on here and drip off. So I'm actually tilting the pot, or sorry, the pot lid, so that I know where the grease is going to go. And I can grab 
paper towel and put it under there ready to catch it so I don't have a huge mess all over my oven. Alright, now this is going to take about two minutes. It's going to be very quick. Just going to want to brown one side and then we're going to flip it over and brown the other side. So you can see why this is a very quick recipe for dinner. Uh, chicken breasts are really interesting. Um, you can either marinate them for a while and they'll really soak up all of that flavor. Or if you have it planned ahead, which I almost never do, then you can actually just pop them in here, cook them up plain. Um, I've found that pasture raised chicken actually has a really good flavor. Yeah, I mean, like chicken, you don't really think about it as having a flavor, but if you can actually get some really good chicken, it does have a flavor. So once you fry it up, or I guess saute it up in this case, then you can mix up a different sauce. In this case, I'm going to do a pan scraping sauce, which is a great way to clean the pan first off, um, waste not. And also it's going to pick up those little brown bits that are in the bottom that are really tasty and have a lot of that flavor in them. So we're going to create a really good sauce. Uh, since it's summer and I love basil, I've picked some basil out of my garden and I'm just going to cut that up and throw it in with the pan sauce with a little bit of lemon. I've been on a lemon basil kick lately. I've been experimenting with a lemon basil cake and it's coming out really well, so do stay tuned to see that one. Alright, so let's see. I can see the edges are just starting to get brown here. I'm going to let it go for another few seconds just to make sure it's nice and brown. Now these should be almost cooked all the way through, if that makes sense. So basically, it, if there's a teeny bit of pink in the middle, that's okay, because we're going to put them into the oven, and it's at 200 degrees, so it's not hot, so it's not really going to cook them anymore, it's just going to allow them to finish cooking and get cooked all the way through the center without losing that moisture. Alright, so let me go ahead and flip them. I'm going to use my raw chicken tongs. Alright, there you can see it's starting to get a little brown. I can probably leave that on a bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and flip it. There, that was nice and brown. There we go. Put that back on. And I'll put my raw chicken tongs back here. Alright, so the reason this recipe actually works and it keeps it from getting dried out and uh, just tough is the fat. You're cooking it completely in fat, at least half the chicken is touching fat at all times, so that keeps it nice and moist. The issue with boneless, skinless chicken breast is because you've taken the skin off and you've taken the bone out, you've removed all of the elements that are actually going to keep that chicken moist, which is why it's such a difficult meat to work with. So by cooking it in fat and very thin for a very short period of time, we're eliminating the kind of drying out factors. So this is going to be really easy and really effective because you're always cooking it in fat. Now there's actually, when I was researching for this technique, there's a really cool old technique people used to use where they would actually take like bacon fat and they would thread it through different meats that were a bit leaner to really keep that moist and that flavor. And there's actually like fat threading needles, which I had no idea. I'm going to have to go try and find this. I think I found that in the Joy of Cooking, which was very interesting to read about and, you know, really smart. If you have a lean cut of meat and you don't want it to dry out, you just put fat into it, which, like, that was weird. I've never seen anybody do that, I guess, because so many people have been scared of saturated fat for so long now. We've lost a lot of these techniques, and we're trying to make up for it with, like, I don't know, weird things, like, I think it's, like, papaya extract to, like, tenderize the meat, and, yeah, anyway. So, going back to the basics, going back to really good home cooking, where we concentrate on how the meat's supposed to be prepared, how it's been prepared for generations, and really be nourishing to our body. If you haven't heard about the big fat controversy, um, you can check out my blog. I do have a whole post on the different types of fats, which kind are good, which kind are, you, you know, you want in limited quantities. I'm not going to say it's bad because, like, the one fat I'm thinking of, which is polyunsaturated fatty acids, which you do want to avoid because we definitely get enough in our diets, but our bodies do need a little bit of it. So, saturated fat, that's what I'm cooking with. That's the one you want a lot of. 
it's really healthy for your body, despite what you may have heard. All right, so let me check on these. I'm gonna check with my cooked chicken tongs. Uh, I don't know why that one's not browning as much. Maybe my can is at center. There we go. That one's getting nice and brown. All right, let me give it just a couple more seconds here. Make sure you get nice and brown. That's gonna make it nice and crispy. Smelt that again. Right. So once we're done with this, you can really cook up like a ton of these all at once. So you can keep them in the fridge, keep them cold, carve them up for salads. You can really do anything with them, especially if they are unflavored, because uh, they do have a nice, a nice, you know, chickeny flavor, but they pair really nicely with everything else. So. For these, I'm going to make up pan scraping sauce, like I mentioned, and maybe serve that over cold flour rice. And that's just a really nice, hearty meal. It's very familiar. It's a comfort food. Uh, if you want to get a little more fancy, you want to do like a citrus salad and put some chicken on that. That's also really easy. You just whip up a salad dressing, which is really easy to do just like some fruit juice. Um, you know, to so pull out a lemon, maybe an orange, and squeeze those and then add a nice light oil, maybe like an avocado oil. It's very low in flavor. Um, well, it doesn't have that like really rich, strong olive oily flavor. That's what I'm saying there. Um, and then just throw in some seasonings, just a little bit light, like for instance, I'm using the basil. And that should make a nice light dressing to kind of citrus salad, maybe those some of those little mandarin oranges, uh, cranberries, nuts. So that makes a nice summer meal. I'm really think it's summer. So it's pretty hot outside. Okay, that should be good. So let me go ahead and pull these off. And figure out which way I wanted the steam to go there. All right, yeah, so this is nice golden brown. You can see, I can show you. There you go. Nice golden brown. You can see on this side, a little less cooked. That was the first side I did, and then I really let it go through right there. So that's a nice golden brown. I'm just going to put that on my plate sitting out over here. Grab the next one. Okay, so that one's starting to get a little burned on the edge, you can see. So I probably should pull that one off a minute more. Um, whoop, hmm, I'm not really sure where that burn came from, but probably my pan's smoking. There we go. All right, so let me turn down the heat just a little bit. So I had it right about six. I'm going to turn it back down to around four, maybe like a medium. And I'm going to throw the next guy on. Oh, I could probably use a little more. A little more fat. There we go. So let me just redistribute the fat right here. Now if the pan smokes, that's fine. It's going to do that. The longer you keep the chicken out, the more it's going to smoke. Just turn down the smoke. Let's turn down the heat if it's starting to really smoke. All right, now we're going to deal with the quick chicken. So I'm going to try and kind of keep this one together. So you're just going to lay it down in the pan. I'm trying to keep it flat out, but I'm really trying to reconstruct the chicken, essentially. There we go. And then I'm also going to throw these little tiny bits down where leaning into the bacon fat, where all the bacon fat keeps going. Oh, shoot, I've used the wrong palm. Hold on, let me get another palm. That's why I keep, like, the three pairs of palms, because I always do that. This is another one now, but there we go. Let me grab this. Like I said, I use my dish rag for a whole lot of things. Let me get some of that back in there. I don't like what this is doing. It's all pulling right here, so I'm just going to add a little bit more of the cooking oil. There we go. I'm just going to put it right up here so it'll run underneath the chicken as it melts. There we go. that back on, try to center my pan again, it's getting kind of hot. Okay. Alright, now these are probably going to cook a little bit quicker since the pan is getting hotter. So I'm just going to want to watch for those edges to start browning. It's getting a little smoky in here. Normally I turn the fan on, but then you can't actually hear me. So Adam and I just bought this house and we've been renovating it. So I'm kind of living semi in a construction zone right now. Uh, but the one thing that I really love about this kitchen is that this actually 
actually vents to the outside. So many kitchens nowadays, it just vents straight back out the top, which is not terribly useful. Like, it does remove some of the grease, which is nice, because then you don't get, like, the grease all over your cabinet. But it doesn't really help with smoke. So I need, like, one of those smoke detectors that you can, like, turn off, like the Nest ones. I think you can have a phone out and just, like, shut up. So but that would be nice, because I do tend to set off the smoke alarm, especially when I'm cooking steak. That smoke goes everywhere else. You can walk in and be like, oh, yeah, I totally understand. I see what you've been doing. But at least this kitchen is like, it's nice and compartmentalized. I know like open concept is really popular right now, but this kitchen is like super compartmentalized. There's actually a hallway leading into the living room. So it contains all of the smoke. So at least just the kitchen gets smoky now. And I can just like open the window or open the door and try to get some of that out. I also got um, an air purifier. So that way when I'm cooking, I can just kind of run that and hopefully get some of the smoke out. I don't always, Soak up the kitchen when I cook, I promise. It sounds like I do, but I don't. But uh, it happens more than I'd like to admit. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So let me check on the chicken here. Uh, let me pick one up. Yep, that's ready to flip. And let me flip my really interestingly shaped chicken. There we go. I'm just turn on heat a little more. Just because I'm covering it, it's making the chicken, uh, ma or it's making the pan heat up a little bit more. So I'd really like a splatter guard, but I need to get one. I haven't gotten around to it. But if you start to see that the chicken is starting to get a little too much color on it, just turn the heat down. Now my heat is down at four. So I just to give you an idea of where I'm at. And we'll just let that keep cooking. And it should be done momentarily. Like I said, you don't have to check these things are done all the way through because they're going straight into the oven or they're going to continue to cook. And of course, I'm also getting grease everywhere, which is usual. Uh, we're going to put up a backsplash here, a beadboard backsplash, just because I can give you pretty and homey, but um, I really don't like it when I don't have a backsplash because then grease goes everywhere. I feel like it gets into the walls, even if you have a good quality paint, which is just not because we haven't repainted yet. We repainted everywhere else. We haven't painted this one. This is like the contractor's stuff. Then it gets into the paint and it, just, it doesn't come out. So we're putting up a beadboard backsplash. Hopefully you'll get to see that soon. Just wipe it down really quick, really easy. Uh, that makes me feel a lot better. Especially because I don't know if everybody's messy when cooking, but I am extremely extremely messy when cooking. It's like when I start using the immersion blender and I pull it up a little too far and suddenly everything goes everywhere. And I try to like hold my hand over the bowl, but that doesn't always work. It still, it just goes out the other side of the hand that I'm using. So maybe it's just me. I feel like my mom's a little less messy than I am, but maybe that's just years of experience. But I just have stuff go everywhere and then I just clean it up. All good. All right, so let's check back on this chicken here. Um, I guess since it's mostly cooked, I'm going to use my cooked chicken tongs. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Okay, so that one's done. We got all the way through. Let me pull that off, throw it over there. This little guy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Alright, so let's get the heat all in there. I'm just pushing it down right in the areas that didn't get brown, just from the way the chicken great uh, cut, shake, yeah. So it's like there's little pockets that aren't quite touching the grill or the pan, um, so they're not getting quite as much color. So I'm just kind of pushing those down in there to make sure it gets a nice bit of color. There you go. All right, pulling that off. All right, I'm going to turn the heat down to low while I deal with this. Okay, all done with the chicken tongs. Um, I'll load this too, so I'm going to throw all that in the sink. No, I'll hold on to these for now. Alright, so we got my chicken here. Have aluminum foil, which I'm just going to cover the plate with. Just make sure your plate, if it's like 
dishwasher safe. It should be fine. It shouldn't be an issue. Just throw some paper over top of it, or some aluminum foil over top of it, and pop it in the oven. Try to put it towards the middle. And we're just going to leave that in there while I make this pan scraping sauce. All right, so let me get my foil out of the way. Use this to clean up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So this is the pan scraping sauce. I'm going to let this cool down for a minute. So I'll actually take it off the heat. I'm leaving the burner on low though, so I can just pop it back on there. And I'm going to cut up some garlic, which I have, there it is. Misplaced my cutting board. All right. So let me pull out the garlic right quick. Just gonna get a few cloves. I've got about three there. This is a nifty little tool that my mom gave me. It's supposed to peel the garlic. Most of the time it works. I don't know if there is any real fast way to peel garlic, but whoops. Like I said, completely messy. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Took out, there's some really stubborn paper on this garlic. There you go, I just kinda, it's not coming off. There's, I don't really know what this is. I've never seen purple paper on garlic before, but there's some purple skin or paper, whatever you wanna call it, on the garlic that just does not come off with that little turbine thing. I don't know if it's actually called a turbine or if it's anything like a turbine, but Adam once told me that the reason it worked was similar to how a turbine works, so. I don't know. All right, let me crush this one too. You just kind of squish it with the heel of your palm, so that helps loosen up the skin. There we go. So I'm letting the pan cool down because I don't want to burn the garlic. If you're going to throw in onions, this is a good time to do it as well. There we go. Alright, so it's getting a little bit cooler. You don't want to burn these guys, the aromatics, then they get kind of gross. You just want to nicely brown them. So I'm just going to cut up the garlic really quick here. And this little clove kind of escaped, so let me get that one. We're just going to keep the chicken in the oven during this time. It's not going to overcook, so it's not a big deal. Oh, and there's one too. There we go. All right. So we pop the pan back on the heat. Make sure there's enough oil in there. Yeah. We just need a little bit. We don't need to go crazy. I'm gonna grab a wooden spoon. Turn this up just a little bit so I can put it on two for right now. So I can get all this garlic browned. And it should be very quick. Probably on about three. You can hear it sizzling. I'm just gonna keep moving it so no side gets burned. onions and garlic. I don't have any onions in here, but I kind of threw some garlic in. It's just one of my favorite smells. Okay, so I'll let those go for a second, and I'm going to take chicken broth. I made this last time I made a whole roast chicken. Right, I'm going to measure out about three quarters cups here. There we go. Give the garlic another stir. And now this is where we're actually going to be able to get all of the little bits off of the pan with this broth. So here we go. There we go. Alright, and now if you just start really kind of scraping the pan, then all that stuff can come off pretty easily. And once you put the chicken broth in there, you can turn it back up to a medium heat. 
you're going to want to bring this up to a nice simmer. I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit higher until it gets to the simmer and then I'll just turn it back down. Well, that's coming up to a simmer. I'm going to chop up a little bit of my basil. I'm not going to put my basil in there right yet. don't want it to get cooked too much. But let me grab a few pieces here. I've got a few, ba few basil plants. There we go, outside. They're doing really nicely, so we've got a lot of basil here. All right, let me rinse these off. I literally just picked them this morning. Nice and fresh. There we go. You can see this is starting to smoke, so stir that a little bit. Alright, I'm just going to chop up my basil. And when you're chopping, just the up and down motion. it all nice and diced up. There we go. All right. Okay. Now it's really starting to simmer there, which is great because we want to start cooking all that down. That's how you get a nice thick sauce. Mm, I always love chopping basil because my hands smell like basil for a while. Once you've got the chicken stock in there, you don't have to worry too much about the garlic burning or anything, so just kind of let it cook off. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to turn this back down a little bit. Now it's on right between four and five, so nice medium, medium low heat to keep that simmer up. Alright. And just when I'm cooking, if you haven't noticed, I do tend to play with the temperature and just kind of get to get a feel for what's going on when you're cooking. Okay, so that's cooking nicely. It's come in nice, low simmer. So now I'll go ahead and add the basil. There we go. Don't want to cook the basil, like overcook the basil, but I do want to get it nice and seeped into the chicken broth. Now all of my all of my chicken bits are off the bottom. You should be able to feel the spoon is no longer sticking. It's moving nice and smooth through there. There we go. I'll just keep cooking it down. All right. Now I'm going to take half a lemon and there's definitely going to be some seeds in here, but I don't think anybody will die from that. Just give it a nice squeeze. There we go. So I got you know, maybe about half the juice out. That was maybe two teaspoons in there. There we go. All right, pop that back up to medium. And just keep cooking it down. Then we add a little pinch of salt. You've got an eighth of a teaspoon. A pinch, and you just kind of grab it. There's always about an eighth of a teaspoon. There we go. Okay, so now it's starting to get reduced. It's probably down around maybe a third of a cup ish. So I'm going to go ahead and let that continue to simmer, but I'm also going to add my butter. Now, the key to a really good sauce pan scraping sauce. There's a lot of butter. It's going to make it really nice and thick. If you can't use butter, you're going to have to use a little bit more tapioca starch. So let's see, I'm going to get a couple tablespoons of butter here. 
kind of pop that in. This is Kerrygold butter, which I really like. Alright, so I'm going to switch out my wooden spoon for a whisk. Get the butter really mixed in there. Keep reducing the liquid. Now you're going to notice when you're doing this that the butter actually sits a little bit on top. And that's okay. It, it'll, it'll incorporate fully once we add our starch. Now a lot of times you're going to see people adding flour to this recipe. And that's actually because when you reduce the amount of butter, because people wanted to reduce fat, uh, the sauce doesn't thicken, it's not as rich. So they started adding flour to it, which you know not only helped with the starch aspect, but also helped substitute for butter. You're actually going to see that a lot when you get like a low-fat yogurt or anything like that where they've taken out the fat. In order to keep it nice and rich and a nice consistency, they're going to have to add carbohydrates back in. Um, and a lot of times in the form of like yogurt, that's going to be sugar. In this case, you'll find a lot of recipes that add flour, and you actually don't need flour to do a pan scraping sauce. In fact, if you had enough patience, which I really don't, you could just continue to cook it down until it's nice and thick and rich. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of tapioca starch to make it nice and thick, because that's just a little bit faster. There we go. Okay, so keep letting that cook down. I'm going to grab my tapioca starch here. Tapioca flour. I'm just going to add a little bit. So I'm going to take another little, I think this is actually like a teaspoon. I'm going to get a yeah, heap teaspoon. Okay, and I'm going to add this slowly so it doesn't start to clump. You get a few clumps, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't taste like anything. Add a little too much there. So let me just kind of get that incorporated. You just really want to like sprinkle it while you're doing this. Maybe someone with a little bit more like delicacy could actually sprinkle it. I just kind of like drop small clumps at once. There we go. You'll see it start to thicken. And it's really going to thicken once it starts to cool. There we go. So when you're doing this, you actually, here I'm going to turn this down to four. When you're doing this, you're actually going to end up getting it a little bit thicker than you want because once we pull the chicken out of the oven, there's going to be a lot of juices in the chicken and we're just going to add this to the pan scraping sauce. There we go. Now that it's getting thick, you can really see it bubbling. Alright, so let me get the last of it in there. Incorporate that. Use the heat to low. Okay, so now I'll turn the heat all the way off. Let me close the starch. If I get any liquid in the starch, it'll be not much fun to deal with. And let me pull out the chicken. Let me pull this off this heat first. There we go. All right. chicken juice in there. There we go. Put the chicken back here. Move this pan back over so you can see it. Normally I just keep it on the heat. And that's going to thin the sauce just a little bit so it's kind of nice gravy-like consistency. And turn the oven off. Alright, and there you go. You've got 
your chicken breast done, you've got your pan scraping sauce done, and now you can serve it over cold flour rice, you can serve it over vegetables, whatever you like. And let me try that. There we go. Mm, that's nice and rich, nice and lemony. All right, so I will see you next week. And if you enjoyed this video, do share it. You can subscribe, just click up in the corner. It says subscribe to the live feed, or if you're on YouTube, click down in the lower corner to subscribe to my channel. You can check out more recipes at my blog, which is rxprimal.com. Reach out to me on Facebook and Twitter. I love feedback, and I hope to see you again soon.